Hey, good evening, everyone. How you doing? Hi, my name is Ed, faithful believer in Jesus, and we're going to start our worship off and our day off, our, our evening off a little bit different. We need to give a big round of applause to our guest speaker tonight. He's a wonderful guy, He's a good friend to CR, and I'd like to introduce Mr. Fred Hammond to come on up. And we're going to let him start us off, and then we'll go through everything else. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, brother. Good evening. Haven't been here since I retired three years ago, but that's okay. Um, oh, I might have to put my reading glasses on tonight. Let me just kind of start with uh, kind of where I came from to help you understand uh, who I am and why I believe what I believe and how I believe it. I, I grew up in West Los Angeles, long before the, all the freeways. Uh, I was born in 1941 in Oklahoma. So I just celebrated on April Fool's Day my 80th birthday. So yes. I grew up in a family of two brothers, uh, a father, a father that was a non-believer, and a mother, a grandmother, and an uncle that were really strong believers that really impacted me as a, as a young, uh, young boy. And um, what's interesting, though, is my two brothers uh, didn't see it the same way. And uh, they both passed away. Both my parents have passed away, so I'm kind of the end of the run. Um, after graduating from high school, some of you may know, Venice High School, in February of 59, I tried the college scene, but it didn't ring my bell. College isn't for everyone. So I joined the Air Force and did the boot camp thing and, and all of those good things. And then I did a, a six month stint uh, in Texas learning accounting and finance. And so I was an accounting and finance expert. Uh, that with three years of college that I gained over the course of time allowed me to uh, move into banking. But before we go there, let me tell you a little bit about ha Hawaii. I spent three years there at Hickam Air Force Base, and I was single. Um, one of the things that happened there was that my faith became my faith. And I'll tell you how that happened real quickly. I was in an adult class, and the preacher who was teaching had the audacity to give the adults an actual test on the biblical materials we were studying, basically the book of Acts, which, by the way, is your pivot book in your Bible. And once you understand it and where it fits in history, you understand your Bible and uh, all that's in it. So he gave a first test, Paul's first missionary journey, and there's no way in the world I could pass it. And so I flunked. I got my test back with an F on it <laughs> in church. It never happened to me like that before. So having failed that test, I said that would never happen again. And it didn't. I not only uh, got to where I could really study the Bible and, and understand it and share it with others, but um, I also worked with a, a major in the Army who was kind of a mentor, and between the two of us, we taught a high school class on the parallel life of Jesus from the Gospels. What a time that was. So when I finished my course of three years in Hawaii, uh, I definitely determined that the faith I had was real, was true, and was where I wanted to be. It was not what I was because that's what my parents or my grandmother or my grandfather were. So moving on from there, I ended up in the world of banking because of my three years, almost three years of college, plus the four years I spent in the Air Force with the major training and accounting uh, Two years college accounting is how we started. By the way, that class was six hours a day, 6 a.m. till noon, five days a week for six months. So we learned a lot about accounting and finance. And a good part of it was how the Air Force did it, not how the world did it. Um, so my banking career began in Los Angeles. I trained in Beverly Hills, which really turned out to be a really good place to train. Uh, eventually, I ended up in Northern California. I worked for a total of four banks. I was a bank manager, a business banker, and then I was a regional vice president in charge of commercial real estate lending for the valley here, the northern part of the valley, and my counterpart was Fresno South. And uh, 
it was a really good job. I, uh, I, I came to Stockton before I took that position for a temporary position in 1983. And I've been here ever since. Temporary position became a bank manager position and then the regional vice president position for the Valley. So uh, I've been in Stockton for a long time now. And I've been at Quail since June of 1985. How do I know that? Our youngest daughter was born Christmas of 1985. So that's how we know how long we've been in Stockton and uh, at, uh, at Quail. Actually, we came to Quail in 85, came to Stockton in 83, went to another smaller church that didn't really have much leadership. And we tried to be a part of that. It just didn't seem to work. We weren't on the same page. So we came to Quail as the result of an invitation of one of my customers at the bank. He says, hey, if, uh, if you're ever unhappy where you're at, check out Quail. I always remember that. And so that's how I ended up at Quail Lakes Baptist Church. Um, so that was June of 85. In uh, January of 87, I became the elder finance treasurer because my bag has always been money and managing money and that sort of thing. So I was the volunteer elder. Then in 2002, by coincidence, not because I had planned it, uh, the fellow that was filling in, John Edenfield, as our business administrator, uh, said, hey, this 18-month stint is over. He stepped in for Don Bradstreet when Don passed away um, in short order. And uh, <clears throat> so I uh, were sitting around the table. Uh, let's see, it was the elder chairman, Pastor Mark, who had been here six months at that point, and myself trying to decide how we're going to replace this really important position. And the chairman said, Fred, didn't you express an interest in this job at one time? I said, yes, but it was a gopher job. I'm a vice president of a bank. I don't want a gopher job. And Pastor Mark says, we don't want you working a gopher job. We want to move to a new level. Those of you that were involved in bringing Pastor Mark here, the reason we brought him here, Pastor Fred saw the need to bring someone else in, so we did, and we moved up to a new level. So it was no longer a gopher job. No longer a gopher job. And so, we worked it out right then and there. All I needed to do was go home, visit with my wife, and pray about whether this was the right move after being in the world of banking for 35 years. So it was kind of a scary move if, uh, if you've ever considered something like that. So in 2002, I became the Executive Director of Operations. Tim Ancorn has that position now here at the church. And let's see. So, Here's one of those things where, how was God involved in this? I'm looking back at my training in accounting and finance. I'm looking at the experience I had because that, plus the three years of college, is the only reason I got into the officer development program at Security Pacific National Bank. Um, so it seems like maybe uh, God was preparing me. I was in business for myself. We had three self-serve gas stations, which was retirement plan E, F, or G that didn't work out. And so we got out of that. and. Uh, so it's just like over that period of time, because I was a business banker, I, uh, I was prepared for this job that I, that I held for almost 16 years here at Quill. I was 78 when I retired, actually 77, almost 78. And, um, but I just, I knew it was where God wanted me. It was something I really enjoyed doing. And also during that time, we also led all the classes here on finance. And we went through Good Sense. Before that was Larry Burkett, and we put our own materials together. Then uh, came a Good Sense, and now Dave Ramsey. And for those of you here in Celebrate Recovery, you're here for a reason. And, my, and one of the things I want to do is encourage you to consider taking that next class. It is very worthwhile. And I've had people say, hmm, I don't have much. What do I need a class like that for? Those are the folks that need it the most because every dollar that comes into your household, and I've seen some of you in that class in years past, that comes into your household, you know where it's going. You're managing your finances, you're setting the boundaries, not your money. So I've been involved now with the Life Together groups for over 30 years, and I have to conclude pretty quick here because I've got a class I need to go lead for uh, studying on, uh, let's see, Max Licato's study on uh, Jesus the physician tonight quite a healer so I uh, 
retired in January of 2018, and I've been fishing ever since. Well, not totally, not totally. I still have my fingers in things. As kind of a transition, I still serve on the personnel commission here at Quail, and I still serve on the foundation that uh, we put together back many years ago, and I'm the treasurer for the NorCal Association. Now, some of you may not be familiar with that, but we have about uh, 33 churches here in Northern California that are part of that association, and, and I'm actually on staff, and I'm the treasurer for that organization and the business administrator, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, I've been sitting on the uh, Church Investor Fund Board for the United States side, not Canada, uh, for over 10 years, closer to 15, I guess. So I still kind of have my fingers in, in the Lord's work here at Quail because I think that's what he prepared me for. And uh, so through all the years, there have been ups and downs, there have been challenges. I mean, it's not always been peaches and cream, let me tell you. You don't raise five kids and have 11 grandkids without there being some ups and downs uh, along the way. But I was always in the process of growing and becoming, and I'm still doing that today. And so that's my encouragement for you tonight, that you would grow your faith, and in doing that, you will find God to be faithful. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you so much. Let's give Fred another round of applause on his way out. Thank you, Fred. We appreciate it. Thank you for your time. He's been a big supporter and has run classes and helped us a lot with CR. Okay, um, I introduce myself. Welcome to Celebrate Recovery. The purpose of Celebrate Recovery is to allow us to become free from life's hurts, habits, and hang-ups. I read that wrong. Man. By working through the eight principles of recovery based upon the Beatitudes, we can and will change. We will begin to experience the true peace and serenity that, have been, that we have been seeking. Through this program, we will restore and develop stronger relationships with others and with God. And that's the most important thing. We develop a relationship with Christ in our life on a daily, daily basis. Okay. Uh, I mentioned the following. We have an elevator. So if we were going upstairs to a class, it's right across. And I think most people here might know where that is. Um, bathrooms are big thing, restrooms. This is a non-smoking campus, so if you need to have one, we encourage you to use the sidewalk and not the street. And so you don't get run over. Please silence your cell phones, especially in your small groups. Um, literature table, we have Mr. Mike. Hey, Mike, how you doing? We have got, we've got study books. We have got, I can't see that far anymore. We have got all kinds of books. We've got Bibles. Ish, yes, we have daily devotionals, monthly devotionals, yearly devotionals. And we have a lot of free material that helps describe the different hurts habits and hang-ups that we, myself included, have had and can help bring clarity to. Um, I saw, let's give Tammy a round of applause for being a greeter. And she came over. Thank you, Tammy. Okay, um, we have a special announcement coach and her name is Freya. Hello, Forever Family. I'm a grateful believer, struggles with codependency and depression, but not today. Woohoo! I'm excited for um, to announce the Women's Step Study is starting this coming Sunday from 1 to 2.30, so please sign up, um, send me your number, and uh, we will be meeting in the corner room, A118, and also the men's group is still open. This is the last day, men, if you're wanting to join the step study, was this Thursday, 6.30 to 8, in room A212. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Freya. Yeah. Okay, I have asked two people to come up and read. Um, Robert and Pablo, known as Paolo. Let's give him a round of applause. He gets in the side. 
including the announcements, leaders, remember this Sunday, we're having a leaders meeting in room A118 at 11.15, and hopefully it'll be done in an hour. Thank you. <laughs> uh, grateful believer in Jesus Christ, I've struggled with sexual issues and people pleasing, and my name's Paul. Hello, my name is Robert. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I struggled with drug addiction and pornography. Hey, Robert. <coughs> Okay. One, we admitted we were powerless over our addiction and compulsive behaviors that our lives had become unmanageable. I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Romans 7.18 Two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Philippians 2.13. Three, we made a decision to turn our life and our will over to the care of God. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Romans 12.1. Four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Did I read that already? No. Yes, you did let us examine our ways and test them, and let us return to the Lord. Lamentations 3.40. Five, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. James 5.16. Six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up. James 4.10. 7. We humbly ask him to remove all our shortcomings. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. 8. We made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Luke 6.31. Nine, we made direct amends to such people whenever possible, except to do so would injure them or others. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Matthew 5, verses 23-24. Ten, we continued to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. 11, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 3, 16. 12, having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to others and practice these principles in all of our affairs. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently, but watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Galatians 6, 1. Through, Through God's, God's grace, grace lasting change, change is possible. possible. Give them a round of applause. Thank you, both. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Paul. Okay, now, now is the time in the, in the meeting when we normally have a speaker, but we already had a speaker, and uh, huh. so we've got like 14 minutes. I don't know if you want me to sing. Uh, okay. To dream the impossible dream. That's it. One little bit. <laughs> I have nothing else up here. I have the uh, closing serenity prayer. Did you have an, uh, another? Yeah. Yeah, come on in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Pablo, come on. <laughs> Since we've been allowed to come back, we have been meeting in this room for our large groups. Uh, the church is now asking if we are ready to start moving back to our old room at the, in the Eplex over the education building. So those of you who remember, remember that building. It can hold a maximum of 28 chairs separated as this. And 
except for twice in the last um, year, we've never, we haven't reached that point. And that gives us a little fudge factor because we can also move off to the side. So your leaders will be meeting on Sunday and number one topic is facilitating that change. So if you have a position one way or the other of strong thoughts, find somebody with one of these lanyards and give them your thoughts. Um, so we'd love to hear your thoughts and feelings. That's it. I figured I'd get a data for a few, few minutes. Thank you, Paul. Well, I'm excited about moving back up there. And uh, I do like our, our gym because, you know, it's spacious, hot air rises, and you can see mine's just going way up there. And uh, so I guess we'll, we'll close. Prayer for Shannon. Thank you. You are on top of this. You know, somebody knows what he's doing. Okay, can we have a moment of silence followed by the serenity prayer? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did, the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next, amen. If you're a newcomer, well, let's see, who is taking over? Paul and Freya are, will be right over here, one of them, and we'll meet you and gladly explain this whole program to you because we have a special class and it's called Newcomers 101. And it explains everything that happens at the beginning and uh, the different groups we might have for you, or we do have for you, and um, the whole program. So that's, that's about it. So Paul, raise your hand. And Freya is over there, and there we go. So thank you, this is time now to, we're gonna get an early start in our groups, and if we get back here at 10 to eight, that's okay, there's still, I'm, there might be sunshine still, you know at dusk yeah so thank you give yourselves a round of applause <laughs>